Hello everyone, welcome back to the second edition of this week's episode and we're here with our special guest, uh, John McGovern. It took us a while getting him off the pitch and um, he's running about kicking the football like he's just got a child with a new, like a new toy at Christmas. Um, so eventually got him up anyway. John, welcome on the podcast for the second time. Yeah, cheers. Yes. Thanks for having me. Yeah, two years on from your first appearance, actually, in, in lockdown. <laughs> I know. 18th of April 2020, so got to hear in person. Anyway. Long time ago. So, first things first, we'll get on to the last few games of the season. Um, obviously, a big game against Anna coming up on Saturday. Uh, we'll probably have to mention the Irish Cup at some point. Um, but first of all, we sort of got you on at this time because you know, you're just not long back from the number 21s um, against Slovakia and then France. Yeah. So Slovakia is the qualifier, and then you made your first start against France. They're friendly, yeah. Um, and we were chatting to you that night, and um, you know you were you were happy about happy about how you played. Obviously, the, you said I think you said it was the best team you ever played against. I mean, give, yeah. give us an insight into sort of the level of players you were playing against. Like you're playing against all French League One players, all starting first team in the French League, like so. Sort of compare yourself against that playing for obviously playing in Northern Ireland the Championship, and you're playing against boys and. 15,000 a week mm. in France, like, and then you have the likes of Camavinga as well, who's coming on for Real Madrid the other night in the Champions League. Like, <laughs> it's a bit of a step up, obviously, from the Championship, but no, it was just an unbelievable experience altogether. Just test yourself against that sort of standard of football. What do you sort of learn off those guys? I mean, can you learn when you're when you're sort of probably chasing after them for a good bit of the game? What do you sort of pick up, or what did you pick up from? Obviously, it's just compl- it's just sharpness. Mm. Everything they're always one step ahead in every single way. Always thinking, passing, any sort of movement. They're always one, two steps ahead of you, and it's kind of hard to realize when you're running after the ball for seventy six minutes or whatever it was on the pitch. But even I watched the game back at once or twice, and it's just they're just complete next level footballers compared to some of us. Like I know there's unbelievable standard playing for Northern Ireland as well, but. That's just another step up completely. Like. It, yeah, it must be a kind of pinch yourself moment because you, know, you broke through here a couple of years ago. Yeah. And then, like, fast forward two years, lockdown, there was no football for that period. And then all of a sudden you're playing against these guys. It must be a bit of a pinch yourself, is it? Yeah, it's madness. Like, coming here when I was, I think it was 15 or 16 when I first came here and then signed a contract when I was 17. And then fast forward, I'm 19 now and I've six appearances for Northern Ireland, 21s. Never did I ever think I was going to achieve something like that, obviously. So it's just... I'm happy to have it. And I think it's even more impressive the fact that you have done it from the Championship. Yeah. Like you said, your teammates are maybe Man United, Rangers, Celtic, wherever, and, and you did it from the Championship, and now you're established yourself in that team. Yeah, it just goes to show it. You don't have to be playing for a massive club, and it even gives a wee incentive for, obviously, local boys around the area that when you're 15 or 16, you don't have to move to Linfield or Glentorn if you want to play a bigger football, or you don't have to go across the water as early. If you can improve your game and you're playing men's football at home, there's no reason why you couldn't do it. Are you trying to say we're not a massive club? I was just thinking. <laughs> 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 no real Madrid. Like. <laughs> well, we're not far off. We're in Barcelona level. <laughs> um, I mean, I suppose you know that was your, your your first start, and you were thinking you were the only part time player that was yeah. um, was starting that day. Um, you mean you've obviously broken your way into that that team, and, and you made a lot of probably a lot of substitute appearances. Um, I mean, what's the sort of when you're playing? You're know, obviously like you got. Big names, I suppose, like Ethan Galbraith, who's obviously yeah. highly rated, and there's a few other guys like say, Keen Boyd Bonson, Paddy Lane have made that step up in yeah. the senior squad. Paddy Lane made his debut last week. I mean, does it show that there's there is a sort of pathway to the bigger, better things for not just for for the likes of you, but for all the players? Yeah, of course. Even there in that last camp, but the camp before, we even did a bit of a training session with the first team in Northern Ireland, like, and you sort of see the standard and. There's boys looking in and out and obviously you're keeping an eye on the 21s to see who can progress and you've Trey as well who mm-hmm. went from sure. playing every single week for Linfield. He's now over in Sunderland doing unbelievably well in Sunderland and rightly so he got to step up to the first team for Northern Ireland seniors as well. Like so. And he played very well as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it just gives you an incentive as well that there's always another progression you can step up to. And how do you combine that with, I mean I know we've probably talked before you know about you're obviously studying at, at Queen's. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're up and down the road, coming down here to train, and then you're you obviously away for what? What you away for ten days? Yeah. Whatever it was, you know, under twenty ones. How you, you know, not how difficult, but how do you manage that sort of you know doing your your keeping your education and going and playing football at the high level as well? To be fair, Queen's are very good. They offer an academic flexibility program. So, obviously, for international sport, I applied for it, and they gave me extensions on my deadlines and stuff. So, so when I got back, I just 
basically had to go flat out and get as much done as I possibly could in that short space of time and get it handled up. But Queen's, to be fair, are very lenient and they help a lot as well with the education side of it. And then just driving up and down and trying to get in the library as much as I can during the day. And also a bit of crack as well up and down. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a balance as well. Yeah. <laughs> Can I just point out that it's that it, that it, that it, that it, that Dan sitting in the back? <laughs> he's, saying, he's saying all the right things. Here. Not too much balance. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I suppose, you know, I, I, I'm not trying to get you to say anything here, but in terms of, you know, we always have a taste of playing with players that are playing at a higher level. I'm not necessarily saying that they're a higher level of player than you, but they're playing at bigger clubs and they're playing either they're playing in the Irish Premiership or majority of them are playing across the water. I mean, does that give you a sort of taste to, to go on bigger and better things? Because, I mean, like as much as I'm sitting here with your supporters, I'd love yeah. you sitting here and you play the rest of your career at Newry, you know, and then, you know, I fully appreciate that's highly unlikely to happen. But, I mean, do you, does it give you that taste to go on to go on to bigger and better things, whenever that may be? Yeah, obviously, you're seeing boys playing at a professional setup. You played football from your younger, younger, you always want to be a professional, you always want to play football every day and nearly have it as a job. and have it as a lifestyle like so obviously yeah it's something i would love to do but i need to get an education as well obviously you need a backup plan and your education's something you're gonna have for the rest of your life you're not gonna be playing football when you're 50 60 years of age like so mm. uh, i think that's a really immature approach like because so many people just go i just want to be a football and don't think yeah. about anything else you know and then they end up like you said 34 or maybe with nothing else to be at so that's exactly, a good way of taking yeah. it but you know, as Gar said, we would love you to be here down for the rest of your life. Yeah. <laughs> John McGovern standing there behind the post. <laughs> Ch- 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 the post. <laughs> you can't leave. I mean, but obviously your first protocol is uh, is gripping up the Premiership for your next season. Yeah, but, uh, obviously. Yeah, just, just, just yeah, checking. Just, 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 here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, looking at that, obviously, you know, we're, we're looking at in the last five the games. Um, good Anna coming up on Saturday, which you know. It doesn't need saying, but we'll say it anyway. It's it's a huge game. Yeah. In the context, it's a huge game anyway. Even regardless of who we're playing, getting the last five games because it's your closest rivals, you can go seven points clear of them. And obviously, you were away with twenty ones whenever we played Bally Clare last time. Yeah. Like, um, did you get this? Did you see the highlights of that game? Yeah, watch I'll watch back the highlights. And we used to astonished by Jackie Carver's second half of the oh, was Unbelievable! I think it, he was waiting to tell everyone as soon as. He <laughs> I mean, There's plenty of slag in the group chat later on that night. So. <laughs> I mean, look at it, look at it, I mean, we probably, it's probably the first time in a long time, if maybe at all this season, we should really begin with a full strength squad. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, if you're looking at it and coming back in um, from being away in the under 21s and then don't start, or maybe you do start, you know, maybe down up the opposite, keep the same side and start yeah. the second half. I mean, sort of, I think every player, regardless of the situation, wants to be playing week in, week out. How do you sort of, how does any player, I suppose, if they're, if they're potentially sitting on the bench, I'm not saying you specifically, but yeah. if you're sitting on the bench for a game like that, I mean, how does any player sort of manage that? And that you, know, you want to get on and you want to, you want to contribute? Obviously, you have to just take it on the chin. Like, you're told the squad and the team before the game, you're not starting. You take it on the chin, you watch the game and see what way, if you were to come on, what way you can impact the game and focus on that as much as you can. There's no point to well if you're starting or if you're not starting or depends whatever the circumstance way you might not be on the pitch, but if you're as a sub, if you're as a sub during the game, you just have to watch and see what way you can impact it if you get on. Yeah, so yeah, I think what's interesting as well is like you came down here, you know, it's like sixteen, seventeen, like you said, and then you know you started to break into the team, and there was something about you, and everybody like kind of bought into that, and then all of a sudden you come into the season and you become one of the main players, and that expectation's naturally being handed on to you. How, yeah. Do you think about that, or is that just do you just naturally get on with your own game, or how, how do you approach it? Uh, obviously. It's good to be recognised as one of the main players in the squad, but I just play my game as natural as I can and try not to overthink things or try not to say all oh, the pressure's on me or obviously big names like Dingo as well. Like there's, I don't think boys like that take pressure. You know, you're always so used to playing at a high level that you should be able to deal with it naturally. Like, I mean, looking at look at the last time we played at the the BMG Arena, as, as it's called, up in Anna. I mean, you scored a cracking header for yeah. Ronald Crackley. I actually missed that game. As everybody keeps telling me, it was the best performance of the season. <laughs> and, like, yeah, great. That was the one game I couldn't go to. Um, I mean, does that if you're going to a game and you have those sort of memories of the last time you played in the pitch and you, you play well and you score a good goal, do, do you think about that sort of going to a game? You know, going you know, the you positive thoughts going to the game, or does it have any bearing at all? Yeah, I think it does. Obviously, if you played well on the pitch before and you're nearly going in confident, knowing like oh. I didn't play bad and I know I can play well in this pitch and you're sort of painting a picture in your head of what you did last time, what you did well. You sort of have 
nearly good memories of playing on it. So I think that's nearly half the battle you're going on that pitch thinking, right, I was here the last time, I played well the last time, nicked a goal and had this win. So, yeah, fingers crossed on Saturday if I can get another one. Does it... I know there's old cliche that many times I've done interviews, you know, proper media interviews yeah. and, you know, you, you maybe back to back games say like you say for example you're the internationals and the manager will always say well we take one game at a time that's yeah. and stuff. Uh, do you, you know if we're being honest do you sort of think about going right well you've got Saturday's game and then you've got Gold and Welders call free in quick succession yeah. do you sort of think about I mean I'm sure players do think about the situation of well if we win all three games we, we, we win the league, win the league. Yeah. I mean has I'm not saying has that been discussed but is that, does that come into a player's thoughts here when you're talking amongst yourselves or what yeah it's what it does I think We've sort of realised that like we'll have a massive chance here to go and win and get promoted. So obviously Anne is probably the biggest game of the league so far. We went Saturday, we're as he says, seven clear. So I think Saturday is just a massive stepping stone and after that I think we can push on. There'll be confidence there if we win it on Saturday to go and win the following game. So I think all the boys are sort of really buying into it now, the massive <coughs> push now for the last five games. What would it mean to you to get promoted with this team, considering like you know you've come up through it and now you're such an integral part of it? What would it mean to kind of lead that team up to the Premiership? As a young lad, obviously coming in, you're playing for your hometown club. Like obviously from here, you live three minutes away, four minutes away. Like it would just be a surreal sort of feeling, and it sort of gives us the whole city and everyone left. Obviously, the fans have been unbelievable all season, and nearly something we're doing for them as well as much as we're doing for the team and the club themselves like. yeah, it says That's all, it. It says all <laughs> the right things right? and, and yeah. just other fans as well you have a song have you heard it from the pitch yeah sort yeah. of yeah. what's your thoughts on it <laughs> yeah, it's very good <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I think um, all the boys sort of a couple of wee chants and they all like their wee chants alright so but just as, as like from a, a player's point of view does that give you a bit of a lift on the pitch I know you have to pretend like you don't hear it and that you're all active professional constantly but there must be times where you kind of look, look at the cross like and this is pretty cool like. yeah obviously if you're playing well I know when someone's chanting your name and you're playing bad you're like oh jeez <laughs> with that shut up but um, <laughs> no obviously it, it helps along and sort of gives you a wee boost as well you think oh the fans are sort of not on my back here but they're trying to give me a boost and then you sort of nearly do it yourself and give yourself a boost as well so yeah it definitely definitely does help and in terms of let's just hark back to you know, touched on your header you scored against Anna yeah. earlier in the season but you scored a cracking header against Ballon and Allard away yeah now let's be quite frank here you probably ruined it by running over the supporters and then doing your Ronaldo celebration and getting the piss taken out of the <laughs> uh, I've noticed I haven't seen it since whenever you scored those two against Allard you didn't do it did you? no I don't think so I did a wee bit of a celebration against the Orange and then obviously the penalty was... Is there, not, is, there Ronaldo, is, is, is there potential for an Aldo celebration to get broken out again before the end Possibly, of the Possibly, if we, <laughs> if we beat on on Saturday, you <laughs> yeah. might see it. There you go, you've heard, you've heard it here first. Uh, I mean, you know, I suppose, look, you've obviously won trophies at underage level when with the Stars. Yeah. Um, and I mean, you've been hugely successful there and they've been a big part of your sort of, your your growing period, I suppose, as, as, as a footballer. Um, I mean, you haven't won a trophy though since since been down here. Yeah. Um, the club hasn't won a trophy. Yeah. Um, and even a lot of the, well, we've had those four promotions in five seasons and all the rest of it gets talked about quite often. I think there's only one of them or two of them were were league title wins and they were in Mid Ulster. Yeah. I mean, to win a trophy at senior level, um, I know you touched on what would Ali asked you about what would take that or what would it feel like to get promoted, but in terms of winning the trophy and I appreciate. I don't want to get you know too far ahead of ourselves. Yeah. To win a trophy at senior, your first trophy at senior level. I mean, how important is that in your sort of development and you know in your career? I suppose it's obviously it's going to be something that you're always going to have. You say, nineteen years of age, um, I was playing first team football all season in the championship, and hopefully you can say I contributed to us winning a league title, like and getting promoted. So it's obviously a, a massive asset to have. Obviously, if you're for myself trying to push on as well, saying I've a league title in my back pocket as well. And who's, um, I mean, now bear in mind, he's he sitting on the other side of the room here. Who's been the biggest influence in your career? He's <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah, I'm doing laughs> <laughs> put his hand in <laughs> Obviously, I have to give a shout out to my daddy. <laughs> <laughs> From I was no age, I was out the back getting tortured, trying to kick the ball on my left foot and my right foot and just learn all the basic skills. So, Definitely, definitely was a big help and a big stepping stone from my development from obviously no wage up until obviously now as well. I get wee tips and 
different thing from him, back from him playing back in Ballybot days and that sort of thing as well. So. Decky Carvel a very close second, is he? Yeah, he's close. <laughs> <laughs> like, Damien Hill would have coached you at, at one point, would he? Yeah, I think I was, I think it was 15, 15 or 16. Just before you came down here then? Yeah, I only played, I played a couple of friendlies and a couple of training sessions and then I completely took a year out of soccer and played obviously for down minors and then came here and played a bit against, I think it was Armagh City my first yeah, game and then yeah. kicked on from there. So. And I mean, looking at, obviously you just touched on the, the Gaelica and obviously had a huge successful season down on the 20s yeah. last season. Um, I mean, it's something that, you know, you get that sort of rare breed where, where players are, you know, at an extremely high level at, at two different sports. I mean, you see players that are very good at one and maybe decent, uh, yeah. but whenever you're sort of at the top of your game at both, I mean, do you, do you ever get, have you ever had to make that decision where you're going, well, uh, you know, or it, would there ever come a time where to make that decision where I might have going to play soccer here and I'm going to play Gaelic or... Is that something you haven't thought about yet? Well, obviously recently, I know we were meant to play the Irish Cup there last Saturday, and down under 20s had a, their quarter final against Scrum, and unfortunately were beat. Hmm. But um, I was sort of contacted to play there, and obviously, as playing Gaelic all my life, I was down to play, <laughs> but I sort of made a promise to myself at the start of the season that I would give soccer a good go, and so far, touch wood, I've been injury free all season, and Obviously, it's hard not playing both, and you have loads of mates playing as well, and they want you to play, and they obviously want to win, and it's cultural as well. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was a hard decision not to play, but I sort of had this on by just playing soccer all season and giving it a good run, especially when they were this close and with an Irish Cup semi final, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Not saying anything yet, but mm-hmm. with an Irish Cup semi final and five massive games left to push for the league title, so. Well, that is one thing I was going to ask. I mean, just just lastly on the Irish Cup itself. Um, I mean, there's nothing we can do it about it now. Obviously, yeah. we protested and and won our protest, and then it rumbled on. And you know, obviously, the, the, the latest update is that they're going to take it to arbitration. It'll be another couple of weeks. I mean, it must be impossible for I suppose for Dan and the coaches to get the players not to talk about it because I mean, yeah. pretty much everybody is talking about it, and the fans, you know, media, the whole lot. I mean. How sort of hard has it been, maybe to, you know, not knowing whether you're playing, thinking they're playing, yeah. you know, and then being up in the air, and then okay, right now it's put to bed now for yeah. at least a couple of weeks, and they can concentrate now the game. How difficult has that been, just as a group? Uh, it's hard because of the amount of speculation about it. Like, so boys are nearly trying to prepare right with a massive game on Saturday, and then with another massive game the following Wednesday night in the Irish Cup, and you're sort of preparing yourself and getting ready for two games in such a short period of time, and. Then you're sort of told, oh, it's being postponed again. And obviously, boys want to play. You want to play in an Irish Cup semi-final. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we don't know if we're going to be playing on it, which we hope we do. But it's hard mentally as well. Like, you're preparing for an Irish Cup game and you're preparing to win the league as well. So it's definitely, definitely difficult on your mindset as well coming into it. It's a good problem to have, though, isn't it? Yeah, it could be worse. <laughs> yeah, it's a very good problem to have. Well, I think that'll probably wrap us up for this week. Uh, thanks very much, John. Well, uh, John. Thanks for having me. Just keep an eye out. Uh, this will be good. Whenever this is going out, it'll be going out obviously before the Anna game. Keep an eye out for the Ronaldo celebration. <laughs> it's, it's been promised. Like, I mean, it wasn't even if I score. It's like, if, <laughs> if we, we win, win. <laughs> it's So, I mean, it's going to look really stupid if we win 1 0 the ball because then our deck is arse in the last minute. And he's running about the Ronaldo celebration. I'll take 1 0 and celebrate. Well, thanks very much, John. Uh, thanks for watching. Thank and you, we'll hopefully see you for a. a Fingers crossed, and maybe a, a title celebration one um, in a couple of weeks. Hopefully. Oh,